Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This video is going to be about how CHS handles job costs, in other words, how it finds which records in your accounting database are actual job costs. And the way it does that, and then I'll show you, is that you will use a cost code um, in a record and by having a cost code other than zero means that it should be included on subsidiary job cost reports. CHS can't really know um, what different GL accounts you might be using on your chart of accounts for posting your job costs. So the way I decided to handle that was to just comb through your whole accounting database and find all records that you marked with the job code and a cost code other than zero. For a second before I get into a tool that you can use to reconcile those job costs to your accounts on your chart of accounts, I'd like to open the accounting database just for one job and it's a demo job I've been using in a lot of my uh, records. I've already put in a range of dates and I've asked for my accounting database for just this job and let's open it up for a second. This is going to show all records that have the job code for the VistaView job. You can see that job code going on here. And what you can see here is cost codes going on. If you hover over them, you can see what those are for. But this is your accounting database, so it's showing you general ledger accounts and the balances in the account for what I searched for, which was for that one job. Now this is called direct construction costs in our set of books, which is under work in progress on our balance sheet until we finish the job and it makes sense that almost everything here in this particular account would have a cost code on it and quite often people think that because they use this because it's the most commonly one used in NHB they think that their job cost reports should match this total in our case right now it does because if you scroll down and you watch that cost code column as I scroll down you'll see there's a cost code other than zero in every single column but now notice when we're in the place where we've been posting our deposits construction loans payable we have a zero cost code that means CHS and it shouldn't uh, won't pick up these deposits as job costs um, it's a contract deposit another thing to do with deposit so all of those are zero so right now you can see but if we ran a job cost report for everything in our accounting database with that cost code, I mean with that job code, um, our job cost report would tie right to the balance in the 1430 direct construction costs. But let's see what happens if we go post something to another GL account and then I'll show you the tool that you can use that will make it handy for you reconciling in your head. Um, your GL accounts to your subsidiary job cost reports. Your job cost reports, like I said, I'm going to repeat, do not care what GL accounting number you use to enter an entry. It just looks to see if there's a cost code other than zero. So let's go home here and let's run post a bill real fast. And let's say we, it's the only job we have going in the year 2015. And so we need to pay general liability insurance and we've talked to our home buyers and that's capital city insurance and let's say we have a bill in and let's do a job related bill. And once this opens for capital city insurance you're going to see that our default general ledger accounting number that is dropped in um, is not that 1430 it's one um, on our office expenses for general liability but we've uh, we want to have it there so we go ahead and deduct it from our taxes this year etc and, and that's up to you and your accountant whether you really do that or whether you do put it to 1430 um, but my thought is let's go ahead and get our job in here my thought is that you might want to go ahead and deduct it but not the rest of your job cost but you've gotten your home buyer to agree to let it be a job cost because it's the only job and any insurance that you're paying um, and I know I happen to know in my cost codes it's way down here um, 9992 on this person's uh, account and let's just play like um, this is in December 
uh, 15th, my birthday, <laughs> and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, they've given us an invoice, and we'll just call it 2015 GL Insurance, just get rid of that whole word, GL, let's just call it like that. And I don't know what it'll be. Let's just play like it's $4,000 to make it easy for us right now. Um, and let's go ahead and post that bill. We have put a cost code on it, but we're not using the 1430 GL account. For whatever accounting reasons, um, we are doing this, but we want a cost code on it because we want it to show up a cost code other than zero. We want it to show up on job cost reports. So let's go ahead and submit that. Um, it paused to tell me it's over budget because and over because we don't have any POs. I know it's over budget because this builder didn't in in our demo job we didn't budget anything for that. Usually um, we're not charging our general liability to our jobs, but in this case I'm using it for a demo. So let's just continue and not worry about that overage right at the moment, and let's just post it as unpaid to pay later for now. Now, and I'm going to show you something. What we're going to do, and this is the screen for, um, we'll go back to that accounting ledgers, and I'm going to go ahead and open that, but then I'm going to take you to a window that shows you how you can spot things like this. Now notice we have all of our cost codes, cost codes without, that are not zero, and then all of a sudden we come down here and we have a cost code under insurance general liability. So if we ran a job cost report, it's going to include that $4,000. Um, so now the job cost report isn't going to tie to the balance um, that we have here for direct construction costs. The job cost report is going to pick that up. So if we go here and we look at our budgets list and we look at our demo job, and we decide we want to run a job cost report for it. So we just go to actual costs and we pull up um, just our actual job cost detail. And we go look at our total. You can see that it's 75,781 instead of 71 um, that's in the direct construction cost. You could actually spot that if you looked at these a little bit. And you can see that this GL account is 8232. So our total job costs are $75,781.91. So just kind of keep that in mind. Now what I'm going to do is show you a tool if you are trying to reconcile. I'm going to go to Financials Balance Sheet P&L Trial Balance because over here there is a trial balance that sums by job which is very handy. Let's do this Balance Sheets Trial Balance. Whoops. Click on it to expand it and let's just use 12312015 and what I'm going to show you is this trial balance with job sums and you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. It takes every GL account and lists the balance. It shows you the balance in your GL accounting account. Our total balance if we looked at our balance sheet for direct construction costs would be 3964.1416. What it does is sum up the amounts in this account um, by job. So you can see our job here and you can see that it's 71, 781, 91. If I click job cost this GL, I like to check that and these are only job costs posted to the 1430 account. In other words, you'll see down here cost code not equal to zero. That That is tying for us right now. I'm going to post one with a zero cost code here in a minute to the 1430. Then here's job costs other GLs, so that can be real handy for you to find what other GL account has cost codes in it besides that 1430 and why that will help you some figure out why um, there's 4,000 more on a job cost report than there is in this direct construction cost. You can see um, all job costs, all GLs for this job. In other words, um, this should tie to your job cost report. 
it's going to group them by your GL account you can see we have all these 1430 and by cost code and then all of a sudden we have this GL account with a job cost in it also this ties to the actual cost report that we opened a minute ago but it can help you spot what other accounts actually have <coughs> job costs posted to them like I said CHS doesn't know doesn't care when it's doing a job cost report about what GL account you used it just comes through now this one will show not job costs in this GL in other words you're looking for something that you may have posted to direct construction costs and there's no records that you may have posted with a zero cost code and you might be wanting to look for those just in case you did enter some bill and you put it to 1430 it should have been a job cost but you left off your cost code um, I probably don't have to go demonstrate that I think anybody listening to me can probably figure that out if I ran over and I did a bill right now for who knows um, the framing laborer and I put a zero cost code on it and the job code and it'll let you do that because you're needing to do that some for accounting for other things um, it might it warns you a little bit that you're doing that but if you put a zero cost code and you use this GL account that will not show up in the job cost for this GL because it's only going to look for things that don't have a GL account but it would show up if I click this link for not job cost this GL so that could help you there's two things that could happen one is that for why this number is not tying to some job cost report maybe you used a different GL for one of your job costs or you posted something to this account that has a zero cost code now once you close the job etc the, the journal entry that happens will have a zero cost code um, if I was closing the job I'd be taking this 71 781 out of 1430 and probably putting it to cost of sales um, etc and that that um, journal entry will have a zero cost code and that would show up here if you went ahead and clicked not job cost this GL but hopefully this would be showing zero once you've done this um, the other thing to look for um, since so many people do use this account to post their job costs is if you accidentally end up with something in there for the H job which actually H job means no job um, sometimes you just call it your internal house job we have to have a job code in every record because this is a relational database so I have H um, as the one that just defaults in as meaning basically no job <laughs> um, if you leave H it just means it's not a job but in, a, in something like your work in progress accounts like 1430 you probably don't want um, to see any H's in here with no job so you can spot those and drill down on them and also uh, see if there is an H you won't have all these job costs drill down you'll just have the drill down for the entire account when you when you click on this number here you'll be able to see what makes up that see all the entries that make up um, that balance right now as of that date you can print a trial balance report up here that um, includes a line for the sum of all cash accounts if you went and ran a group a little report of your cash accounts they should total to that um, because this is a summing by job um, it has to do a reversal kind of thing to do that so we don't show how much is in each job right there we have some other reports that show you the net cash contributed by each job but this is a full report of what we've just been looking at the GL accounts um, here's our direct construction cost and how much is in that account for each job and like I've said when people start out with CHS you don't have to set up a whole bunch of GL accounts on your chart of accounts because CHS is so good uh, at knowing which job every record goes to and being able to produce a report like this but hopefully these tools help um, some accountants people trying to reconcile job cost reports to the balance on their um, balance sheet for things that are in progress etc um, hopefully some of these drill down tools would help you by opening this window like this this is it
pretty handy tool for reconciling your job cost reports to your actual accounting books numbers. Hope that helps and thank you for watching.